This is Michael S. Jenkins. I've been a professional Wall Street trader and investor for some 43 years now, and since 1985 I have published the Stock Cycles Forecast newsletter, which has correctly called most of the key highs and lows in market history over the past uh, 30 years. The purpose of this presentation is to show you how you can do the same and how numbers and cycles are highly correlated with stock prices and how these uh, stock prices recur at given time periods. I'm always irritated when the TV pundits always say no one can predict the stock market. This just is not true. I've been doing it now for some 43 years and I've known of people that have been able to do it for hundreds of years. Many of the highs and lows are quite easily predicted. It's just not, there's a, a very complex number of cycles. It cannot be done all the time but it's done enough to show you that cycles do exist. This is an actual uh, picture of my newsletter from July 6, 2007, and three weeks later I was predicting a top to the market in 2007. The actual top here saying as late as the 24th it was actually the 22nd. I was looking for at least a 25% decline, and I said it would be a panic like 1987 or 1998 due to the collapse of hedge funds who overconcentrated holding in subprime mortgages. This is exactly what happened, of course, and as the market plunged in 2007 into mid-August, the Federal Reserve intervened aggressively with interest rates and caused a second rally to uh, bring the market back into September and October. This is my newsletter for late September of that year, pointing out the patterns from the past that we're repeating. These two tops over here were going to repeat again. In 2007, the second top was a little bit higher than it was 60, 70 years earlier in the 1930s. But again, I was ringing the bell very loudly that there was going to be a major correction just ahead. This, of course, is the outcome of the 2007-2008 decline. These arrows up here are my first newsletter. Here's where the Fed intervened to save the market and brought it back. This is the date of my second newsletter, and this is what I was predicting, this devastating decline. What I'm going to show you is how we could have, and I did, predict not only this low date down here, but the exact low date of this price from as early as the top here and the date of this coming low from as early as five years earlier. Before we do that, however, we'll have to look at some principles behind time and price and see how these things can be done. Here's a picture of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the very first time in 1966 it hit 1,000 on the Dow. And we see there is a correlation with the number 1,000 because 1,000 days later the Dow Jones came back to 1,000 again and three quarters of a thousand, 750 days after the top was the low. And the square root of three times a thousand days was very close to the big low over here. And pi, 3.14 times a thousand days was the exact low in 1974. And the price that day was 577, which is the tangent of 30 times a thousand. So we can see that the price structure itself incorporates within it time cycles and number harmonics that resonate with the various patterns in the stock market. This gets us to our very first principle, that price at the final highs and lows is the time cycle. We see here on this chart of Burroughs Corp that a price high of 66 will spin out time units of 66. These little ones here are every 66 hours. The bigger ones are 66 days, and here's the top. 66 days later, another top. 66 days later, close, another top. 66 days later, another top. And the lows here, 54 and 7 eighths, or let's say 55, will spin out low cycles every 55 days. And we see there was a common denominator here of both a 66 top and a 55-day low coming out, and so the market collapsed. It got down to the low, it tried to go up to the 66-day top, but was pulled back to the 55-day low, then it slung up to the 66-day top, 
then it pulled back to the 55 day low went up to the 66 day top and pulled down to the 55 day low so we are seeing evidence of cycles that are based on the price levels of the stock itself this is our first primary principle that at the final highs and lows or at the major pivots the price itself will reveal the time cycle our next major principle is that time and price must be in balance or be equal in order to change the trend here's a broad swath of the 1929 high going into the 1932 low and I've drawn a little price rectangle around it and I turn that price rectangle on its side to show you a time component of that rectangle so the price drop is now equal to the time duration going sideways to the next bull market peak so you had a price decline then it set up a wave of an uptrend that balanced out the decline and then you started a downtrend again at the balancing point since the final high and low numbers translate into time cycles we can take within the seeds of the number of a low and find a future low or a future high but since these time cycles are just numbers that are being translated by the subconscious mind of man there's no such thing as decimal points so we can shift these numbers back and forth the most common shift is a 10 percent one so for example the bear market low of october 10th of 2002 was 768.50 on the s p if we shift this with the decimal moving of 10 by 10 or move the decimal over one we get 76.85 and if we use a time unit of months get the average number of days in a month times that we get 2,339 days we add that number of days to the October of two, uh, 2002 low and we get exactly March 6 2009 the next bear market low from that big top in 2007 that I was predicting in my newsletter so we see indeed it is true that within the number of a bear market or a bull market high there are the seeds of a cycle which will mathematically pinpoint the next major high or low in sequence this 10 percent decimal shift uh, is quite frequent and it can be in days hours weeks or months here's an example of a daily s p chart from the high of 1576 if we shift the decimal point to 157.6 or 157 days later we get the first big low at that first big low the price is now only 1257 so we move the decimal point there 125.7 125 126 days later is the next big low 721 so again we see the numerology of the top is spinning out cycles giving us our next big turns often we find that these fractal cycles repeat very similarly so a top in february of 2007 that resulted in a 500 point drop and the numbers were 1461 if we take 10 percent of that and get 146 147 days later we will get the next top and we will get another 500 point drop just like the first one here's another one using months as the conversion factor from the 98 low of 923.32 we go to 92.33 months with the average number of days in a month we get 2810 days or 61808 which was the big low down here prior to the next big low up in the market this was a misprint here this 14 it's really 618 is where the cycle came out here's another weekly shift from the 1987 top when the s p was 337 we can go 33.7 months over in days and we get 618 of 90 over here the first top was 68 the 618 was actually the low between these two tops but give or take a week or so right in here we were expecting another big top like this and another big break in the market so from the 87 top to the 1990 top it was a decimal movement of a 10 percent shift this principle 
that the market can only reverse directions when time and price are in balance is what allows us traders to be able to trade very accurately day to day and make predictions about when our stocks are going to turn. For example, this is the S&P and from the 9-11 collapse low up to the first top, the rally phase was about 229 points. So our, our principle says if they go up 229, we have to have a time cycle of about 229 before it will balance. So if we're using calendar days, 229 calendar days later is a major low and a place to go long. Now, since there was a double top here, meaning that from this low up to this top, it's still the same 228, 229 points. We may get a double top or bottom or alternate here and another 229 days defined for us the top right here. So this proves our cycle that when time and price are in balance an advance or a decline and the time cycle is equal, we will get a change in trend. Now this example is a 15 minute chart of Intel and this is shown in my book Basic Day Trading Techniques and it shows the same principle that from a low to a high the duration of time it takes must be balanced with the correction. So this was the amount of time it took to get from a low to a high. The best way to find what is that equal amount of price is to take this horizontal time unit and flip it into a vertical price unit. We can easily do this by using the radius of a circle. If we draw a circle around this, we will find out that this number two here leg will be identical in length to number one. We then take number two and slide it up here at the top to make it like a price bar. So we now know the correction coming from this first top will go down as much as our price bar. So someone in, in here, we will be expecting the correction to balance the amount of time up and once it balances, it will be able to go up again. Now, not shown here, but you can measure this with your fingers. This second top took an amount of time from here all the way over, really, it was two times that cycle. So it's this length in total to that top if you measure with your fingers this amount of time and measure from here down, you will find out that this correction low in here is that exact measurement of time placed vertically. This will work on all time levels. We just saw a chart with a 15 minute chart. This is a weekly S&P chart. And we can see on a longer term basis here over several months from August here through December, the rally phase of the market took this amount of time, which I called the time conversion bar, TCB. If we take this time bar and convert it to a price bar, we now get the theoretical limit of the correction. It takes a little ABC form or maybe a one, two, three, four, five, but the correction will not be over until it balances the amount of the time duration and then it is free to go up again. This next leg up over here shows the same thing. The amount of time it took to go up, converted to a vertical bar, says it should get down here. But we notice in a strong market, it doesn't quite get that low. And the reason it doesn't is it follows a strong angle from the low through the bottom of the theoretical low, giving us a slight incline. So there's a slight miss, but nevertheless, very accurately, mathematically, from these cycles. The same thing here from this TCB, from this low to this top, gives rise to a TCB here, and there's a small miss on the correction amount because there's a steep angle coming up from the preceding one that catches it. But nonetheless, we see there is a corresponding relationship between the time and the price and the balancing of time and price causing the market to change directions at that balancing point. Now this is a partial daily chart of the Dow Jones that extends over uh, 20 years or more. And I want to show you three particular points here from the 1966-67 low, the 1970 low, and the 1974 low. 
Now, if you remember your basic geometry, it takes three points to create a circle, if those three points are indeed on a circle. And when you bisect the distance between each of these points, that bisection will point to the center of the circle. So that's what I've done here. I've drawn a circle through here to find where the center of my circle is. I have not drawn the future yet because I want you to understand the point here that from these three points and these three points alone and nothing else, I was able to forecast all the highs and lows in the bull and bear markets for the next 10 or 15 years. And we'll see that in this next picture. Here we see the full circle drawn. And I want you to recognize again that from the three points over here, the center of the circle was formed. And from that center of the circle, I then could draw the full circle, the circumference. And we note the angle of 30 degrees coming down from the center. When it intersects the circle, it gives rise to two events. The horizontal gives us the bear market lows and the intersection of the circle gives us the time of a new bull market. The 45 degree comes down, intersects the circuit, and it gives us the highs of the preceding bull markets, and it, the intersection points gives us the time of the next bull market. The 60 degree comes down, intersects the circle, and gives us the high of the bull market and the next bull market. And the overall climax to the great bull market, in particular the Japanese market in early 1990, since the Japanese market was the dominant cycle, that collapsed at this circular arc culmination point. Our market over here in the U.S. just went down for a while into 1990 and resurrected for another full circle. But we can see here that from these three points, all the future activity was known regardless of Nixon resigning and Jimmy Carter's hyperinflation and Ronald Reagan's tax cuts, all these things were irrelevant to the cycles that existed giving rise to the mathematics from these three points prior to 1974. Let's examine these angles within a circle a little closer now and look at our basic trigonometry. If we have an angle coming down this little line within the circle from the point of our angle at the corner of the circle down is called the sine. The tangent is from the tangent drawn from the circle to the angle. So looking at it from a downward section, we have sines and we have various length tangents. If we look at it from the vertical over here, the sine would be over here and the tangents would be to the circle over here. This gives rise to the most frequently seen ratios in the stock market. The sine of 30 degrees is a one-half. That's, that's like a one-half retracement. The sine of 45 degrees is a 0 0.707. The ones we see quite frequently are the tangents. This is W.D. Gann's one-by-one one angle, the tangent of 45. And the tangent of 30 and the tangent of 60s relate to the square root of 3. The tangent of 60 is the square root of 3, and the 0.577 is the reciprocal of that, or 1 divided by 0.577 is 1.732. So we will see these ratios showing up over and over in the mathematics of the stock market. This is how this information can be used. Note the 1998 crash low at 923.32 is a price. If we multiply that price times the tangent of 30 degrees, we get a number. 533. If taken as a time cycle in days, we find out that it gives us the exact date and no other of the bull market high in the year 2000. So we see incorporated in the price is a time cycle which will give us the date of the bull market peak. Most things in life vibrate to the number 8. From God's first commandment to circumcise a Jewish boy on the eighth day after birth for the uh, blood sacrifice of the law, to the musical octave, to the periodic chart of the elements lined up as eights, we find that the stock market also vibrates to octaves in the number eight. And one of the key principles is that the square root of a number is one of the, f one of the base frequencies we will see. So we can take the square root of a number and also take the square root of that to get very strong harmonics. 
Here I've used the number 8 and the square root of 8 and took the square root of that, giving me a very common ratio you will find of 1.68179. Multiply that ratio times our low of 923 and you get the exact, just about to the penny, I think the high price was actually 1552.73 or so on uh, March 24th. Now remember the preceding slide gave us the date and that date was incorporated in this low but also incorporated in this low price manipulated by the square root square root of the number 8 gave us the frequency of the high price. Having, pre having previously determined the high price to be 1552.83 if we now theoretically take that theoretical price and multiply our tangent of 30 times that we get the number 896 if we use that as a time cycle and go back to our origin low and add it in number of days we get the next uh, bear market swing low of March 22nd. Now using a little math again on our square root of 8 from the high price let's say 155283 1553 if we divide it by the square root of 8 divided by 2 we get a number of 1098 and we see we had a wide ranging bar that day from 1124 to 1081 but the average on that date was 1102 only four points off what the theoretical low should have been on the date 322 which the previous slide calculated as being the date of the low. We are starting to see that time and price are interchangeable this is based on that principle that at the final high or low the numbers that appear are both time and price cycles. If we take the raw price low 923 as a price but now we convert it and say let's use it as a date, let's use it as calendar days, we find out that 923 calendar days after our top was October 3rd of 02 almost the exact bear market low only off by about a week the final low being October 10th. Now earlier I demonstrated how when we moved the decimal point we found out that the 2009 final low at 666 was related to the 2002 low by a decimal point shift of 10 percent but how we, that gave us the, uh, the low date is there a way we could have gotten the price of 666 out of this? Here's how we get the exact price of 666. We take the bull market high of 1576, we multiply it times the tangent of 30 and get 910, and we subtract 910 from 1576, and it gives us 666 on the date we expected it to be a final low. So we see again that within the numerology of the high date is always going to be some type of mathematical function, a subtraction, a multiplication, a days, a tangent of 30 or 45, and we will come up with a date and time that will balance and the new bull market will begin. What you have seen up to now is only a small sample of the many methods that I use and the, of the uh, numbers and systems that I have discovered as a co consequence of that I've written some nine books and courses on these discoveries of mine and have listed them all on my website stock cycles forecast uh, if you're interested in seeing how this is actually done this next example here is a simple application of the Pythagorean theorem of c squared equals a squared plus b squared and since we have seen that time and price are interchangeable we can take a horizontal time unit and mix it with a vertical price unit to get a hypothesis leg C which is a combination of both and when we do this we find out that the calculated number of days and the price unit gives us a hypotenuse value of 240 in this case calendar days and then I incremented that base unit by Fibonacci ratio the square root of 1.618, the 1382, uh, the 1.618, the square root of 5, and I got these various dates, and if you look them up, they were all nearly perfect hits in the market arising from this simple uh, geometric uh, swing and a little basic mathematics.
Here I show the master design. One God, the circle, dividing into two, the sun, and the interlocking point, the square root of three, is the Holy Spirit, also known as the Christian Pisces, the fish sign, or the sign of Jonah, being the square root of three. These numbers that arise out of the interlocking circles are the square root of two, the square root of three, and the square root of five. And they are the numbers that we will find in all market movements. This is an example out of one of my books. And we take any primary swing, for instance here from A to B, and draw a circle around A, a circle around B, and that gives rise to these two squares within the two circles. And within that, we know the diagonal of a square is the square root of 2. The diagonal of two squares is the square root of 5. And this intersection point distance is always the square root of 3. So from any swing in the stock market, if we take these measurements, we will have all future swings. That is to say, A to B, this swing, repeated itself from B to C. If you measure that with a ruler or with your fingers, you'll find out they're the same. A to C, from this point A to C over here, is equal to the square root of 2 distance. And we can find out that D to E, this smaller one, is the same as 1 half A to B. And F, uh, A to D here, is the square root of 3. Um, so that's A to D measured here is the same as our square root of 3 distances. So we will find out that our measured moves that we see in the future, that repeat over and over and over again, will always arise out of this master pattern of the interlocking circles and the square root of 3. This final sh slide shows a general mathematical grid for a stock. I chose this one because it had a high near the left side of the chart at approximately $100. So I could easily put on the 1 eighth octave increments from 100 on up in eighths and from 100 on down and then using 45 degree angles divide that up into a grid. And we can see at every intersection point of the grid we will have reversal points in the m price action of this stock. We can also see if we take a radius arc from the low to the high and swing it down, the momentum of that arc ties in with a crash pattern in the stock prices resulting in a crash bottom when that arc comes out, showing the mathematical forces in effect on these prices. These are just a few of the examples of the many, many hundreds and hundreds of examples I have in my books and also on my uh, website, stockcyclesforecast.com under the archive section for all the past newsletters and particularly in the traders tips and lessons under stockcyclesforecast.com you will see many many more examples of this and how you can improve your stock market forecasting by applying a little bit of mathematics.